This section talks about the measures of the center of data. Uh, center is what we refer to as a number that summarizes the entire set of values. Um, there are several measures of central tendency. Uh, the mean, uh, which we often call average, but we should call it the arithmetic average if we do use that word average. Um, throughout the course, for the most part, they'll use the word mean. Um, median, we've already talked about uh, being the middle uh, value when things are placed in ascending order. And then mode is the, um, the value that shows up the most. It has the highest frequency. Mean says when each value in the data set is not unique, the mean can be calculated by multiplying each distinct value by its frequency and then dividing the sum by the total number of data values. We have two things we talk about. We talk about the sample mean and we'll talk about the population mean. Okay, um, the sample mean is often something that we can actually determine. Uh, the population mean is often something that is hard to determine because it's the population. The sample mean, the notation for it is we use this x, uh, lowercase x, and then we put the bar on top of it, and we call it x bar. Um, it is the mean of the sample values. So the formula here um, gets very kind of maybe messy, okay? But the, and this is probably an introduction to maybe one of the first formulas that we've really had. Uh, and, and you'll start to you'll see that a lot of our formulas in statistics are messy because it's talking about essentially taking a series of values in one problem that might be 15 data points, and then the next problem might be 35 data points, and the next one it might be a thousand data points. And we can't have a different formula for each one of those situations. So we have to come up with this tool that says this is the one formula, no matter how many samples you have okay so x bar okay now this symbol here this sh um, kind of weird looking e is referred to as sigma it's the greek letter sigma it's capital letter right now uh, and it means summation okay now these other values here um, this number here is referred to as the index which whenever we talk about an index, it's usually a counter, okay? Um, a tool for us to count a position in a list. And the N is going to be the um, total number in your sample. Refer to it as your sample size if you want, okay? Now these X sub I, Okay, that is the individual data value in the, what we call the ith position in your data. Okay, uh, and then obviously n again is your sample size. And all this is, is this is a concise way of saying whenever we're going to take a, um, a mean of a sample, we add up all of our data points, x sub i's, we'll sum them all up, and we'll divide by how many there were. So I'll give you kind of an idea here of uh, what we're talking about. If I have like data values of, let's say, 4, 5, 5, 7, and 10. So let's say that's our data values. If I wanted to find the sum, okay, um, so the sum of my x sub i from i starting at the first one going up to the nth one, what that would look like is 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 7 plus 10. That is what this thing right here is talking about. Okay, where that term right there is in the i position of one. So basically the i is the position it is in the list. So that's the second term in the list. This is i is three. Go down here. I here is four. And i there would be five. 
okay? Um, now each one of these then, this one would be x sub one, we would call this one x sub two, because they're, they're x sub i's here. So if my i is one, that's x sub one, that's x sub two, this is x sub three, x sub four, and x sub five. So basically what this is saying right now, x sub i, I'm going to say the sum of x sub i, it means take the first plus the second plus the third plus the fourth plus the fifth, add them together, and then eventually you'll divide by n. So in this case, n is 5. Um, now you can see that that is what we've known a mean to always be, uh, but it allows us now to say, okay, well, what if I have 6 terms or 7 terms or 700 terms? It's a way of this formula always being able to adapt to however many terms you have. You don't have to have a separate term or a separate formula for uh, varying sizes of samples. So that's the sample mean. Now the population mean, same idea. The notation now is a different letter, okay, because it's just referring to the population. So we use the Greek letter mu, okay, um, and it's like a U, but it's got a stem here at the beginning. Um, and it's what we call the mean population. So now the only thing that's different here is that we start at i equaling 1, so the first term, and now we go to capital N. When we talk about capital N, that is a reminder that we're talking about the population. We're talking about the entire group, okay? Um, we, we've made note of that previous uh, sections that capital letter is usually referred to using um, the population. Smaller case letter is usually referred to um, the sample. But this formula then is the same idea. Take your x sub i's, okay, each individual term in the list. You're going to sum them all the way. And this, this just guarantees that we're going to sum all of them. And then we'll divide by how many we have. So in order for a sample mean to be a good estimate of the population mean, the sample must be truly random. Okay? Um, if it's not truly random, then um, our data is going to be um, biased. Um, and the median, okay, that's the middle number. And we've been doing this, and I've been doing this on purpose. Uh, kind of, if, if I gave you a list, we would kind of cross the top one off, cross the bottom one off, cross, cross the second top one off, cross the second to bottom one off, and keep going back and forth until we uh, got down to what ended up being the middle number, or the middle two numbers. Um, a better way of doing that. Uh, it says the median can be a better descriptor of the data than the mean, especially when very large or small outliers skew the average. So, for instance, if if we were looking at this 4, 5, 5, 7, 10, and then I had a number that was like um, 4,500, okay, that number right there, when I find the mean, is going to pull the mean much closer to 4,500 than it is the rest of the data, okay? That value right there skews the, the mean, okay? It pulls the mean towards it. Uh, and then that mean would not be representative of most of the data. Um, so when that's the case, the median is a better value um, to interpret, to use um, in, in our analysis. So to find where the median is, instead of um, counting like we did previously in the um, box and whisker plots and percentiles and that kind of stuff, is that we can actually use the formula n plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, um, and what that's going to do is that's going to find you the middle term. Okay, um, it says if n is odd, the median will be observed will be an observed value. Okay, so when it's odd, this sum turns into a even number divided by two. Then will give me a whole number result. That whole number result is the position um, of our median. If we have an even number of terms. Um, this top number would be odd then, and we'll divide by 2, and we'll have a 0.5 at the end, meaning that our median is between the middle two values. Okay, so we'll, we'll kind of analyze that here um, with our Excel stuff. So yesterday um, we did this. If you remember, there was a question in the, uh, the section that talked about the scores on a night um, test or uh, class in the, the test scores in the daytime class. This was one of those sets of scores. I believe this was the daytime scores. Um, and we talked about, okay, so if I sort this, so I'll just highlight my list 
right click, go down to sort, sort smallest to largest, and now it's smallest to largest. And we said, okay, well, what if I take that number, delete it, that number, delete it, that one, that one, and keep playing this game until we got to uh, our middle values. That's fine, that works. Um, but an easier way is to use this formula n plus 1 divided by 2, where n is the size of your sample. So I know my, I've put it in ascending order. I know my sample size is 20. So I'm going to take 21 here and divide it by 2. So 21 divided by 2 is 10.5. Okay. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me the idea to find, so 10.5 is going to be between these two. Okay. So what do I have above those two that I highlight? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine terms above. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine terms below. Okay. I like to do this in Excel using a vertical column here because you can see then that this is the first position, second position. This is kind of the ith um, or my index for, you know, 59 is the seventh position in the list. So 72 and 77 are the 10th and 11th positions. I need to find the average of those and that will give me the median. Okay. If I had, let's say we put another score in here. Let's say we put a score of 100 in here. Now I've got 21. So at 21 is my n. Add 1 to it, I get 22. 22 divided by 2 would be 11. So to find my 11th term and 77 would be my median. And it's, it's really that easy in finding uh, the position of your median. Okay. You can really do the same thing then um, here if I want to find like Q3 or here if I want to find Q1. Um, we can do that process again. We've got 10 objects here. Okay, So I'm going to take 10, add 1 to it, and I get 11. 11 then divided by 2 would be 5.5. So I'm going to go between the 5th and the 6th, and I'll average those two. It'll be 56. Um, down here, the way I would do this is I, I still, if, if this was correctly found, then I know that this was 5.5. Um, so I'm just going to go from here and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then it would be these two um, that I'm going to average to find um, that Q3. So that's a formula that uh, can expedite our procedures a little bit. Um, here it says the following data show the number of months patients typically wait on a transplant list before getting surgery. So the data are ordered from smallest to largest. Calculate the mean and the median. Okay. Um, so if we're doing this by hand, which is fine, um, we can take, obviously we'll go 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus. Now, here's the thing, and this is what the... Um, mean up here said when when each value in the data set is not unique the mean can be calculated by multiplying each distinct value by its frequency and then dividing the sum by the total number of data values so usually like this we didn't deal anything with multiplying the 4 or the 5 or the 7 or the 10 by the frequency we just added them all up it was small enough but we could do the same thing we could have written this as 4 Plus, instead of 5 plus 5, 5 has a frequency of 2, 7 has a frequency of 1, 10 has a frequency of 1. So it can kind of shorten um, or consolidate that summation up there when we have repetitive um, data values. So that's what it meant in that um, definition about the frequency. So here, 7, we have a frequency of 4. So I'm going to say 7 and then times 4. Plus then we've got 8 times 2. We've got 9 times 2. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 10 times 5. Uh, 111. 2 12s. 113. 2 14s and 2 15s. And 217s, 118, 319s, uh, 
two twenty ones. Two twenty twos. One twenty three. And then four twenty fours. Alright, so it gets kind of messy there. Uh, but what that is, that is the sum of my x sub i's from i equaling 1 all the way up to n, which is how many data points we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, okay? So up to 39. That's what that numerator would look like. Now we're going to divide that then. We divide that sum by 39, and we have our average, okay? Um, to find our median, okay, if we're going to find our median, we're going to take 39. So I'll let you do this um, average here on your own or your mean. Uh, I'll show you a quicker way to do this in um, Excel as well. Uh, but now if I want to find the median, okay, the key is that these have to be in position, okay, or ascending order. Uh, we're going to go n plus 1 divided by 2. We just said n was 39. So that numerator would be 40 divided by 2 is 20. So now I've got to find the 20th position. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 13 is your median. So that's one of our centers of data. And now we'll also determine what the average is here. Um, I'm going to take this data um, and put it into Excel for us. So when I return, I'm going to pause this and I return that data will be inserted for us. Okay, so that data has been entered here. Okay, um, and what we can do is we can ask this, we can say equals, um, if I want to find the average, so all I do is take average, type in the word average. Okay, now ask me for uh, the list of values that I want. Okay, so I had 39 things. So uh, my first value is in A1. And we'll hit uh, colon and we'll go A39. And you can see that's going to highlight all 39 things that I want. Hit enter. And it gives me my average of 13.948. And we can go out to how many decimal places we need to. Okay, so that's maybe a way uh, to find our... Um, average or mean uh, a little bit faster if our data set is substantially large. Um, if I want to find um, the median, once I've got these in ascending order, I can actually hit equals and we type in quartile. Oh. Quartile. And then I'm going to say A1 to A39 again, and I want the second quartile, and we see that it spits back 13, which is what we had here. Remember the me or the median is the same thing as Q2 or the second quartile. Um, so those might be ways of using our technology to get those uh, measures of central tendency a little bit quicker, okay? Um, you can see that they're not the same thing, okay? Uh, and Depending on the type of data that we have, they may not be the same thing. Okay, we'll talk about um, these relationships between the mean and um, the median. Uh, now we also got our mode, which there's a there's a calculation here. Mode is basically the f the highest frequency. Okay, so I shouldn't hit equals and type in mode. Now, as I do this, there's there's some options here. Okay, um, I'm going to go mode mult, okay, which means mul multitude or multiply, or not multiply, but uh, multiple. 
Okay, so if I go mode dot molt, okay, basically what's going to do is tell me if I have bimodal data or not, meaning um, do you have, uh, I think our mode here is going to be 10 because it shows up five times, but it's going to see, is there, is there any other values here that show up five times? Um, so if I go A1 to A39 again, that list, and it's going to tell me right there that 10, so it went through here and counted the frequency of all these values, and it sees that 10 showed up the most. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete 10, one of these 10s out, and then you can see what happened right there. Okay. I hit mode, and I'll just, just so you can see it happening in real time, M-O-D-E dot M-U-L-T, and I go A1 to A39, it's going to overfill now or spill out into other cells all of the modes that show up the same amount of time, okay? So what we're seeing here is that our 7 shows up four times, 10 is now showing up four times, and 24 also showed up four times. So this is trimodal. Um, the one thing that uh, it doesn't necessarily do for me, we can do... Um, you know, it says seven shows up, 10 shows up, 24 shows up, but it doesn't tell me what is that amount. So what I can do is I'm gonna hit equals count if, and now I'm gonna say my range is A1 to A39. And I'm just gonna say, if that is a seven, let's see what that spits back. And it tells me, okay, it went through here and it searched and counted each cell if it had a seven in it. So it gave me four. So seven shows up four times. Then it must, 10 also must show up four times. And so should 24 if this is trimodal. Uh, so that's some stuff that maybe can help you um, with the use of Excel. Uh, this next example says, suppose in a small town, 50 people, uh, one person earns $5 million per year and the other 49 each earn 30,000, which is the better measure of the center, the mean or the median. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's do this real quick. If I take... Um, Excel here, let's just go control all delete and I hit, let's say first person's $5 million and everybody else is 30,000. Okay, now these 30,000, I'm going to draw all the way down to 50. Okay, so those are all our data. If I have this thing calculate the average of A1 through A50, the average income is $129,400. And nobody in this city or this town comes close to that. But if I do the median, remember that's quartile, so quartile of A1 through A50, and I want the second quartile, that number is better representative of the town than that number there, okay? Um, so that's the idea that if, if you have one value that is an outlier, the median is probably better estimate of the center than what the mean is. All right, so mode, we already talked about mode a little bit, highest frequency. Um, like I said, a data set that has two modes is called bimodal. Um, so I'll let you guys go ahead and analyze this one and determine the mode for that. Um, gets us to the next key term, which is the law of large numbers. You guys have done this. Like if I take a coin and I flip it five times, I might get five heads and zero tails. If I flip it 10 times, I might get 10 heads and, and zero tails. I might get eight heads and two tails. Uh, but the law of large numbers says the more that I do that experiment, if I do flipping that, that coin 10 times, but I do that experiment 100 million times, then the number of heads and the number of tails is going to match out to be what my theoretical probability is expecting me to have. Okay, or what we refer to as our spec probability, um, which is 50-50. So the larger samples we take, the, the law of large numbers starts to, to benefit us. Okay, So it says this law states that when samples are taken of larger and larger sample sizes, 
the mean X bar converges to mu. Okay, so the bigger the sample you can get, the better that your sample mean will estimate your population mean. And that's a huge, huge, huge component to statistics. Uh, and it is one of the main facts that allows the, the process of, of, of what we do and the analysis that we do in statistics to actually exist. Um, you know, the main thing that we do is we take samples and use those samples to look at populations. Well, how can we make sure that, that sample is going to be a good estimation of the population? And it's this idea, if we can get a big sample size, that's better. That's it's going to um, help us estimate that population mean much better. Okay, so statistics a number calculated from the sample. We've talked about that. Um, so here we've got um, says so these are the the numbers of newspapers sold at a local shop over the last ten days. Okay, uh, it says let us count how many of each number there is. Okay, so um, went ahead and just figured out the the frequencies. Okay. Um, Which, if I wanted to find the mean, the median, and the mode, uh, we could do that stuff. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and figure out what the apologize for that. What the mean here is? Uh, it's nice because of the mode right away. We know the mode. That's the one that shows up the most. So mode is four. Okay. Um, if I want to find the median, that's n plus 1 divided by 2, so find 5.5. .5. So I would have to put these in order, okay? Um, so these things put in order would be 18, 18, um, oh. there is no 19. Uh, then I'd have 20, 20, 20, 20. Now I can keep going, okay, oh, not 21, 22, but I don't need to write the whole list here because I'm only looking for essentially the fifth and sixth terms. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm looking for halfway in between there. So halfway between 20 and 20 is 20. So my median is 20. Uh, if I want to do my mean, okay, so my mean is going to be I have two 18s, I have four 20s, um, two 22s, one 23, and one 25. And I'll divide that by 10. So I'll let you guys do that calculation. That should be something we can do. Um, and we can determine then how does that um, set of values, the mode, the median, and the mean, how do they compare? All right, so at times, um, that data um, might not be, um, you know, in these kind of classes here, uh, might not be useful the way we've, we've shown it, okay? We might have too many classes here. The data might not be spread out too much. Um, so what we like to do then eventually is, well, let's just look at a grouping, a cluster of um, like 18 to 21, or in this case, we got 15 to 19. Uh, and it's asking how many, how many papers are sold, um, or how many days during the week do we sold, sell 15 to 19 papers? How many days do we sell 20 to 24 papers? How many days do we sell 25 to 29? So this is a grouped frequency um, table that we've talked about in the past. Okay, um, and the reason I talk about this is because it should allow us, even if I see things in a grouped frequency table, I should be able to still determine the mean, the median, and the mode. Okay, so when only uh, group data is available, which is what this is. Okay, so this is uh, ungrouped. Okay, because we're seeing singular things in our classes. This is grouped because now there's a group of um, those. What, we, what we're talking about? Um, number of papers. Uh, sold over the last 10 days, okay? So um, this is a grouping of 15 papers sold, 16 papers, 17 papers, 18 or 19. Um, so when only group data is available, you do not know the individual data values. We only know intervals and interval frequencies. So therefore you cannot compute an exact mean uh, for the data set. Um, meaning in, the, in this case, so when I go 15 to 19, okay, 
when I found this mean up here, maybe we will actually um, be more descriptive up here and figure out what that is um, by hand. Uh, but if I come down here, now I don't know what did this what did this frequency of two did it go to fifteen? Did it go to sixteen? Did it go to eighteen? Did it go to nineteen? Was was it one of them fifteen? Was one of them nineteen? Was one of them uh, sixteen and the other one seventeen? Were they both seventeen? Uh, we don't know. Okay, so that's it's impossible to figure out that they were in, indeed. If we look at this, they were both two. Um, so you can't find an exact mean for the data set. Okay, what we must do is estimate the actual mean by calculating the mean of a frequency table. A frequency table is a data representation in which group data is displayed along with the corresponding frequencies. So to calculate the mean from a group frequency table, we can apply the basic definition of mean. Mean equals the data sum divided by the number of data values. So we simply need to modify the definition to fit within the restrictions of a frequency table. Since we do not know the individual data values, we, we can instead find the midpoint of each interval. So here's a reason why we've been working on midpoints in the past. And then the midpoint um, is going to be then uh, that value, instead of saying, well, we're gonna choose 15 and 16 or 15 and 19, we're gonna find the midpoint of this um, class, okay? So what we would do is we add those two numbers together, we get 34, we divide that by two and get 17, so 17 is then going to stand in as the data value that we're going to multiply by the frequency of 2. Okay? Uh, so that's what we say, a mean of frequency table. That's what this is saying. It's the sum of the frequency times the midpoints. Frequency times the midpoints. So that's going to give me all of those data points that I add up. Okay? Uh, and then we divide that by the sum of frequency. And the sum of frequency is the same as the sample size. Okay? Um, if I were to add the sum of these frequencies up, we get 10. Um, says f equals the frequency of the interval and m is the midpoint of the interval. Okay, so let's just use this example here and see um, the contrasting results. If I were to look at um, you know the midpoint here, the midpoint of this section is 17. Okay, um, now from what we already know the midpoints should exist the same as the class widths do. So the class width here is five. So the, the width between successive midpoints should also be five. So the next midpoint is gonna be 22 and then 27. So if I wanna find the sum of F times M, frequency times midpoint, well that's, in this first one, I have two as my frequency times the midpoint of 17. Then I'll add to it, the next one is a um, frequency of seven times a midpoint of 22, and the next one is a frequency of one times a midpoint of 27. And then we'll divide by the sum of frequencies. Well, the sum of frequencies is 10, which is the size of my sample. So now let's take that information. We'll go to Desmos here. Oh, I don't have the internet, so we'll do this in I'll just do an Excel. So up here we had when I knew the exact values, we had 18 times 2 plus 20 times 4 plus 22 times 2, plus 23, plus 25. And we would divide that by 10, so that's going to give me 20.8. I divide that by 10. Now if I look at what we had down here, and the group frequency, so I'll go ahead and actually divide this. Now it's round. I, we can change our rounding. Uh, if I go to format cells, see how my decimal places are stuck at zero, so it's going to round it um, to nearest one number. So there we go. Uh, so now in this next one, I'm going to say equal. Okay, so we had 2 times 17. Plus then seven 
times 22 plus then 27 times 1. I'm going to divide that by 10. And there we get 21.5 um, as our mean from the, the group frequency. Okay? And it's, again, the reason there's difference there is because we couldn't see specifically what which of the values inside this class did that frequency of 2 come from. Okay? Or which each eighth term in our frequency was it paired up to in the value here in that class. Um, here's another situation. Okay, so same idea. You're going to take um, the midpoints here. So if I take my midpoint of my first class, so remember the way you find our midpoints is that you're going to take the um, endpoints, so 50 plus 56.5. Okay, and then you're going to divide that by 2. So my first midpoint is 53. All right, so now what we're going to do to get the next midpoint, it's we apply the class width to this. Okay, so uh, our class width is 6.5, so it's going to be uh, 59.5. Okay, we'll add 6.5 to that again. So that's going to give me 66. And I'll add 6.5 to that again. So it's going to give me 72.5. Um, something that could be useful to you and being able to do that quicker instead of just adding each time uh, is you set a pattern up. So I go 53 in Excel, clear out um, one of your columns. I'm going to hit 53. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish my pattern with two values and you can do it with three or four or whatever but now I'm going to highlight both those and now you see that little square down here and when I move my cursor around it's that block um, cursor but now when I move it to that square it becomes that kind of that cross here I'm just going to click and drag and basically what it's going to do is say the pattern that is established in the first first two cells here is going to be copied all the way through as far as the user needs it so you see 53 59.5 the next one was 66 um, 72.5, then 79, 85.5, 92, and then 98.5. Um, we are now going to take the sum of my frequency times my midpoints. So, It'd be 53 times 1 plus 59.5 times 0. Now, you don't necessarily need to do that one because it's a 0. Um, and 66 times 4, 72.5 times 4, 79 times 2, um, 85.5 times 3, 92 times 4. And 98.5 times 1. We will then divide that by the sum of f. Well, the sum of f is the number of frequencies, so 1, 5, um, 9, 11, 14, 18, 19. So we'll divide that by 19, and then we'll have our best estimate for the class um, mean. Now, again, I think we can do that calculation. I'll let you do that on your own. A couple things to consider as we're doing this, okay? Um, so we've seen three averages, the mode, the medi median, and the mean. Um, when, as we work through statistics later on, the mean becomes the most important of those averages. And that's why we usually don't refer to the mean as an average uh, inside statistics because all of these are actually averages. All of these are... Uh, measures of center, okay? Um, so we like to be more specific when we mean that we're talking about adding up and dividing by our total amount. We call that the mean then. Uh, if we're going to use the word average, then we call it arithmetic average. Um, but the mean becomes the most important as we work through um, our analysis of statistics and, and determining 
um, relationships and correlations between variables. Um, so the disadvantage of the mean, however, is that it can be affected by exceptional values. We saw that with that uh, example with the five million uh, dollar income. Okay, it says a resistant measure is one that is not influenced by extremely high or low data values. Okay, the mean is not a resistant measure. Okay, because we can make the mean as large as we want by changing the size of only one data value. Okay, and that can be kind of problematic. Um, the median, on the other hand, is more resistant. Okay, uh, the median is less likely to change from what it currently is if I just add one more data value or two more data values or something like that. Okay, but a disadvantage of the median is that it is not sensitive to the specific size of a data value. Okay, um, so those are all things to kind of take into to play as we are um, conducting our analysis using these uh, centers of um, tendency.